Hello everyone, today I'm here to share some of my favorite adult fiction books. So I did this video um, a few years ago on my channel when I first started really getting into the genre of adult fiction. Since then I have really immersed myself in that. I would say my reading when I first started this channel was like 80%, probably 90% YA young adult books and now I would say it's the complete opposite. It's about 90% adult books. So I thought this would be a great guide in case you want to check out some adult fiction books but you're not sure like you know there's so many different genres what books to read from that genre so today I'm going to talk about the many different genres of adult fiction not all of them because goodness me we would be here a very long time but just like maybe eight or nine of them and I'm going to select two or three books that I think are great for that genre and great for you to read so it's kind of like a beginner's guide to adult fiction some of my favorite books within um, each genre of adult fiction things like that so when you have adult fiction when you have any sort of genre within a book um, world you have sub genres as well you can have adult fiction but what follows under that is romance mystery literary fiction like it goes on and on and on so like i said today i'm going to talk about eight or nine kind of different genres and what two books i recommend you check out from each of those genres so let's get into it because there's a lot of books to talk about First up is the literary fiction genre. So what literary fiction is, is it's not really overly romance, it's not really sci-fi or fantasy, it's set in the real world and it talks about real life things, real life struggles, and mostly literary fiction is... I don't want to say they're gut punch books, but they kind of are. They're books that are more serious toned, that are definitely more heavy on the drama, you know, things like that. So in case you're wanting to check out that genre, the two books I would recommend are. First up is the Beartown series by Frederick Bachman. This book follows a town um, called Beartown and they are pretty much an ice skating community. They live and breathe it. There's not a lot in this little small town. Um, it's just like kind of in the middle of the woods. Nobody really goes there. The only thing they're really known for is ice hockey. But then a big kind of tumultuous event happens that kind of rips their community apart. A The town's like golden ice hockey player is accused of rape and it splits the town in half with one side thinking, hey, there's no way he could have done this. He's like the best ice hockey player ever. Like this girl's lying. And then the other set obviously is in favor of the girl like she had rape committed to her like this is horrible we should do something about it so the whole book really follows this town and several different characters within this town and how this event has really shattered them and how they can kind of recoup from that and how to go on from there like i said this is a series so there is a second book i've heard there's a third book coming out i'm not sure when yet if it's gonna happen but it's a great series to read and i would highly recommend like you can tell it's very serious topic it has rape at the core of it so just be forewarned about that but it is a beautiful series there's some amazing characters in here and there's also some horrible characters in here but nonetheless an amazing series then we have one a lot of you guys have probably already heard of and that is little fires everywhere by celeste ng this blew up i would say last year was it last year when hulu made a mini series about it which i have yet to actually watch I'm really behind on like watching book to movie book to show adaptations but the book is amazing so in this book we follow this neighborhood that's set in like the Cleveland suburbs like it's kind of upscale it's kind of rich white people mostly and we have this new woman this new black woman that moves in named Mia and she kind of shakes things up and she gets to be friends with Elena who is kind of like the head of this neighborhood like the creme de la creme and things start surfacing about Mia's past we also have this other plot going on where and we have a couple of Elena's friends who are trying to adopt this Chinese American baby but things are not happening with that. Things are starting to get a little heated. So this book really talks a lot about diversity. It talks a lot about um, just the different like how it is in suburbs and how like money rules everything and also race and things like that. It's an amazing book. Highly recommend checking out. It's also got a lot of family drama in it because Elena has like four kids. Mia has one and there's a lot of secrets and tumultuous past that's come up but this book is amazing. I would highly recommend it and plus if you love the book you can go and binge the series afterwards. You could do that if you want to. <laughs> 
Moving into one of my favorite genres within the adult fiction world is romance. I have come to love the world of romance and I, I just really enjoy it. So the books I'm talking about today are kind of mainstream romance. I'm not really involved heavily in the indie romance. Maybe one day I will, but today I'm going to talk about two books that I think are great to read that are kind of mainstream romance, if you will. First up, you have the Brown Sister series by Talia Hibbert. This is three books. You can read these all together. You can read them separately. You can read them in order, not in order. I would recommend reading them in order because each of the books each of the books follows a brown sister, like I said. So first up, we have Get a Life, Chloe Brown. This is about a girl named Chloe who is dealing with fibromyalgia, and she's deciding to make a list to kind of do more with her life and things like that, and she meets a guy, and it's super adorable. Then we have Take a Hint, Danny Brown, which follows Danny Brown, who is a super smart professor, and somehow she gets into a fake relationship with her really good friend, Zephyr, and it gets steamy, things happen, fake feelings become real feelings. And then lastly in the series is actor age Eve Brown. We follow Eve, who is the youngest Brown sister, and she doesn't get taken serious a lot. She gets this job at this kind of inn where she's the chef, but the only problem is, is her boss like loathes her named Jacob. And so they have a very tumultuous relationship, kind of a hate to love one, where of course feelings get involved and things get steamed up. So any of these books are great to read. I love the series. You can binge them all. They're all out now. The series is completed, sadly. I'm sad about it because it was such a cute and adorable romance read that I think like just a lot of people will really love. So I would highly recommend checking out this entire series. And the other romance I want to recommend is my favorite Christina Lauren book, and that is The Unhoneymooners. This one is a hate to love romance book that is really perfect to read in summer if you can't tell by the cover, but you can read it any season. There's not like any pertinent role that you have to read in summer, but it is summery, but you know, it is what it is. So this book follows a character, Olive, whose twin is getting married. She's very happy for her. She's the maid of honor. But the problem is she's paired up a lot with the best man and the groom's brother, Ethan, who she loathes. Like they just have a very tumultuous relationship. And basically what happens in this book is at the reception, everyone gets like sick from food poisoning, except for Olive and Ethan who didn't eat. And not so the People get so sick, the bride and groom can't even go on their own honeymoon to Maui, which sucks. So her sister's like, hey, go on my honeymoon for me since you're my twin, you know, might as well get some use out of it. So her and Ethan go to Maui and have to pretend to be married. And of course things happen. It's a very steamy, very perfect book that's like set in Maui. And I love and adore it. It is my favorite Christina Lauren book. They're a very popular author duo here in the romance world. And it's with good reason because this book is so much fun and so amazing. Moving into the thriller genre, I have really also come to love the thriller genre a ton, and I have some favorites now. I think when I first filmed this, I was having some that I really liked, but not true favorites. That's not the case anymore. I definitely have some thriller favorites. First up is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. You know, The Unhoneymooners is great to read in summer, but we're in fall now, and this is the perfect time to read this book. So this book is all about a character named Maggie who her and her parents lived in this like really old house called Bainbury Hall for like two weeks. It was really creepy. And then something sent them running out in the middle of the night and they never looked back. Years later, her father has made a book all about their stay at Bainberry Hall called House of Horrors. And, you know, he also passes away sadly, but he leaves the keys to Bainberry Hall to Maggie. And Maggie has never believed that it's really been haunted, that there's been ghosts. She's like, I don't know why they've always talked about it. So she decides to take the keys and to like actually go and stay, ba stay at Bainberry Hall and figure out for herself, was her dad's book, you know, fiction or reality? So she does just that. She goes to stay at this place and she tries to figure out what exactly happened that many years ago that she doesn't remember, but her parents like don't even talk about it anymore. It is such an atmospheric book. It's got a creepy house. It's very reminiscent of The Haunting of Hill House. So um, if you love that series, because I know a ton of people do that love it on Netflix, this is a great book to read in conjunction with that. It's my favorite Riley Sager book. It's amazing. Then my other thriller recommendation that's one of my favorites of all time is My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. This is about a couple that lives in the suburbs. They have two older kids. You know, their life's good, but you know, they're bored. So they decide to pick up a new hobby. And what shall their new hobby be? Oh, but to murder somebody. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> So they decide, hey, let's 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 go for it. And of course, things get out of hand. Secrets happen. 
please get involved. It gets really insane. It's a very interesting book all about the dynamic of this marriage and how they came to be of like, let's murder somebody together and let's make this like our new thing. Like it says it's Dexter meet Mrs. It says it's Dexter meets Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And I would agree with that. So yeah, we all have our secrets to keeping a marriage alive. Ours just happens to be getting away with murder. It's uh, this took book two by storm a few years ago with good reason because it will have you hooked from page one and the ending is also equally amazing. You know, since we talked about thrillers, let's talk about some horror books because surprise, surprise, I have read a few horror books. Horror is not a genre I read a lot because I get scared very easily and it doesn't really appeal to me a ton, but I have read a few horror in these past few years that I actually have really enjoyed and would highly recommend. The first one being Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. This is such an intriguing one. This is a book that I think would make a great show or movie if they ever decided to do it. Um, will I ever watch it? I don't know, but it would make a great show or movie. So this book is basically about four authors that all write kind of thriller horror books and they get invited to this like um, house called Kill Creek Creek where it has this very tumultuous past as a haunted house and they do an interview there they have to stay the night there and that's kind of where the book starts they stay the night at this place and it kind of goes on after that to figure out their lives and how the stay at Kill Creek has really affected them it's a great book especially if you love books about authors because that's just so interesting reading a book about an author that's written by an author it's very very creepy it starts off not so creepy but by the end it is fully full-scale horror at least to me like there was a lot of pages where I was like, oh my gosh, this is intense. This is gruesome. Like, wow. But it's a really good book. Again, another perfect book to read near Halloween. And the other horror book I would recommend is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Morata Garcia. This is for all of my gothic lovers out there. There's a lot of people that love gothic films, that love gothic, like just the gothic lifestyle, gothic books as well. This is a great one to check out. So this book is set in the 1950s and we follow a character named Naomi who is living her best life and she gets a letter from her cousin who was just recently married saying like, hey, like, it's getting kind of weird where I'm living at because she's living with her husband's family and like their big mansion. And she's like, it's just something's not right. And Naomi's like, I don't feel like everything's 100% right with the cousin. So I'm going to go there for a couple weeks and see what is going on. And so she goes to this mansion and she learns about her cousin's new family and how it's just a little bit odd. This house is really odd. It gives odd feelings. It's very gothic -y. It's very, very atmospheric. This one is not super scary, but it's still classified as horror, so I thought I would mention it. And like I said, it's very atmospheric. It's definitely got that gothic vibe to it, which I would recommend. So in case you love the gothic vibes and things like that, this is a great one to check out. Next up is historical, another genre I don't read a ton of, but I have a few that I just love and adore. First up, my favorite book of all time, The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. I said, I don't read a lot of historical. I don't love it, but yet my favorite book is historical. Just, you know, go with me. <laughs> so this book is set in France in World War II, and you basically follow two sisters that are going through this. They each have very, very different lives. One has a husband and kids and she's just trying to make it. And the other one really wants to help the country and do amazing things. And it's just a beautiful book about sisterhood, about family, about war. And it's just a book that will make you sob. I'm not kidding you. Like I don't cry a lot with books because I just don't by, I don't know, at some point in this book, like I'm talking about just tears were falling on the pages of this book. Like I was that invested and I was that into this book. This is an amazing book. I'm sure you've heard a lot about it. When a lot of people think of historical books, they always think of this one. And it's within good reason. Like it's a long book, yes, but you will fall in love with the characters, with the plot, with just the intensity of the war going around. It is an amazing book for sure. Then we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, another one that you've probably heard a lot about, but in case you haven't, I'm gonna talk about it. So this book follows a character named Monique who gets a chance to interview this famous actress named Evelyn Hugo, who's kind of never given interviews ever. She's kind of been out of the spotlight for a while. And so Monique goes over to her house and Evelyn kind of just documents documents her life of how she started acting in like the um, 1950s to like the 80s and then she kind of just 
disappeared from a lot of things and so she talks about her life and so it's historical in that way because it starts in the 50s with her like starting her acting career and kind of the ins and outs of it and how she had to work really hard to get where she is and also we have kind of like this mystery going on in the background it's an amazing book like oh gosh Taylor Jenkins Reid just knocked it out of the park it was her first like kind of foray into historical fiction and she's kind of like stayed that route since this book and I'm so glad because she does it so very well and I actually have one more historical book to talk about because you know why not and that is The Kitchen Front by Jennifer Ryan the first two you probably heard a lot about but this one I don't feel like a lot of people have talked about this one again is set in World War II we follow four women in Britain who are trying to do the best with what they can ration wise because food was very very heavily rationed in the wartime like you had maybe five ounces of butter to work with each week like it was that ration and so we have this whole kind of radio show called the kitchen front where it's designed to help women do the most what they can with their rations and they decide to have this contest and whoever wins this contest will will be the first woman ever to be like the co-host of the kitchen front which back in the day is a big deal because during the wartime not a lot of women worked so in this book we follow four different women who are f going through very very different walks of life and it also has a ton of cooking and baking in the show because they have to cook um, an appetizer an entree and a dessert and it's just a beautiful book about sisterhood about war about just coming together and I loved it so it's definitely more more heartwarming than the nightingale for sure so in case the nightingale like ripped your heart out and stomped it on the ground and stuff this one will like piece it back together and sew it nicely up and make you feel really happy <laughs> Moving into fantasy, a genre I really don't read a ton of. I've gone off the bandwagon with reading not only young adult fantasy, but adult fantasy as well. I just don't read a ton of it, sadly. But I have two books that I still want to recommend to you. First up is the Mistborn Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson, a very, very popular series here on BookTube and in the book world in general. A lot of people love Brandon Sanderson. And it's been a while since I've read this, so please forgive me. But basically what happens in this book is a long time ago, this evil came to be and the chosen one lost <laughs> pretty much and so we follow many many we follow many many years later where this new emperor is ruling and everything's dark and desolate ash is falling from the sky it's just very depressing but we have some people that want to rise up and to defeat this emperor once and for all and in this book we have a lot of this metal magic um i forget the actual term of it where they can bend metal things like that and basically the whole series is about taking this emperor down because the chosen one failed this is basically like what would happen if the chosen one failed because there's been so many books about you know the chosen one but this is a great book to read i've only read the first book in the series i know but it's still an amazing series and would highly recommend and i'm sure a lot of people would agree then the other fantasy series i want to recommend is vicious series by v.e schwab we have vicious and vengeful i would definitely say vicious is my favorite book in the series i don't know if this even needed to be written but that's a story for another time so in this book we have two characters named Victor and Eli who were college roommates and best friends and basically the book starts off with Victor getting out of jail and vowing to finally kill Eli and you're just like um what 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 happened I thought you guys were best friends so you go back in time to figure out how they became to be best friends and also they discover that they have the ability to make themselves EOs extraordinaries they go to like almost life like death experience and they get brought back to life and then they have superpowers from that they do that they both have this experiment and they both become eos and then something very strange happens and they become enemies and then obviously the book starts off with you know victor's like i'm gonna kill eli finally once and for all it is an amazing book it's definitely a very like heroes versus villains you know where's the line of like black and white the morally gray things like that it's a very addicting series like i said i love the villains one this one I didn't love as much, but goodness me, it's so, so good to read. Moving into another genre I don't read a lot of, and that is sci-fi. I just don't read a lot of science fiction. I'm not superly invested in it, but I've read two that I would really recommend. The first one, you've all probably heard and that is The Martian by Andy Weir. I read this of course when the movie came out because um, 
back then I was really into like making sure I read all book to movie adaptations. I was just into it. But this one I'm very glad I read because it is so fun. Like I think the perfect way to read this book is audiobook because you get the perspective of Mark Watney and you get to hear his voice. Um, so this book we follow a character named Mark Watney who was an astronaut and basically the book starts with him and his team up on Mars. They're doing some missions up in there and a storm hits and they all have to evacuate but Mark gets injured and left behind and his team just kind of leaves um, and they think he's dead. They really do but unknown to them he is alive and so the whole book is about him trying to survive on Mars by himself and he's got to survive for like four years until another like um, until another you know ship comes to come help him so it's all about his survival he's alone on an, an empty planet and it is a hilarious book you would think that it would be so desolate and sad but no Mark Watney's voice really shines throughout this book he's very sarcastic very witty the audiobook like I said is great and I have every single data file on Commander Lewis's personal drive. This is officially the least disco song she owns. And honestly, the film adaptation is equally as good. Like, I loved it. I think Matt Damon played a great Mark Watney. I felt his sarcasm. I felt his humor. I thought it really actually was a great adaptation. So I'm sure if you're a huge fan of sci-fi, you're like, yeah, I've read this 50 times. Like, find something new. But in case you are new to sci-fi, this is a great one to check out. And the other science fiction one I want to recommend is Into the Drowning Deep by Myra Grant. This one kind of straddles the line between science fiction and kind of thriller and horror. I know, but I would say it's mostly science fiction. And this book we follow like a slew of characters that go on this boat because they are on an expedition to find mermaids, find sirens, things like that. Because many years ago, this documentary team went out to try to find these exact same mermaids in the exact same place and none of them returned. And so now, Many years later, they're deciding to, hey, let's go back and let's figure out what exactly happened. And so they do just that and it gets gets pretty gory. Um, so this book is science fiction mostly because there's a lot of science talk. Like, goodness me, I don't enjoy that much in the genre because I'm not very science loving. I'm not a science lover. I'm just, I'm not that smart. I'm not that into it. But this one, like it talked a lot about the ocean and sounds and sun, like all those many things. But there also was this instance of deadly mermaids, which is very creepy and very interesting. So I really enjoyed this surprisingly because it's not a book I would normally read, but goodness me, I really loved it. So there you have it. Those are some of my favorite adult fiction books. Books that I think you would really like in case you're getting into the adult fiction genre, in case you want to look for a certain different genre, things like that. I would love to know if you enjoyed this video, if you liked how I kind of displayed it of different genres and things like that. If you want more favorites from a particular genre that I talked about today, please let me know. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye. So I found myself